Hey Tech Explorers, welcome back to Learning Hub, your one-stop destination for demystifying the digital world. Today, we're diving deep into a fundamental concept in computer architecture, the memory hierarchy. Buckle up, because we're about to explore how computer cleverly manages and access data. Imagine a chef in a busy restaurant. They need frequently used ingredients right at their fingertips. Slightly less items nearby and common ingredients in the pantry. And everything else in the walk-in freezer. The memory hierarchy in a computer works similarly. It's an arrangement of memory storage based on their speed, cost and capacity. At the very top, we have resistors. These are like chef's hands, the fastest and most expensive memory directly inside the CPU. They hold the data and instruction that the CPU is currently working on. But because they are super fast and part of CPU, they are very very limited in size. Next down the line is cache memory. Think of it as the ingredients the chef keeps within arm's reach. Cache is faster and more expensive than main memory but smaller in size. Computers have multiple level of cache, L1, L2 and sometimes L3. L1 is the fastest and smallest, closest to the CPU, while L3 is slower but larger and shared between CPU cores. The purpose of cache is to store frequently accessed data, so the CPU doesn't have to wait for slower main memory. When the CPU needs data, it first checks L1 cache. If the data is there, meaning a cache hit, it's retrieved super, super quickly. If not, that is a cache miss, it checks in L2, then L3, and finally main memory. Retrieving data from a lower level of the hierarchy takes more time. Moving down the pyramid, we arrive at the main memory, also known as primary memory. This is the computer's primary workspace where the operating system, applications, and current data reside. Main memory is primarily RAM, random access memory. Random access means the CPU can access any location in memory directly without having to go through other locations. Now, RAM comes in two main flavors, static RAM and dynamic RAM. Static RAM is faster and more expensive. It uses transistor to store data and it holds data as long as the power is supplied. Static RAM is often used for cache memory. Dynamic RAM is slower and cheaper. It stores data as an electrical charge in a capacitor, which leaks over time, requiring dynamic RAM or DRAM to be constantly refreshed. Dynamic RAM is a type of RAM typically used as main memory. That constant refreshing of DRAM is why we it's called dynamic. Besides RAM, main memory also includes ROM or read-only memory. As the name suggests, ROM is non-volatile, meaning it retains data even when the power is off. Data is burned into ROM during manufacturing and it cannot be easily changed. ROM plays a critical role in computer's startup process. It contains the bootstrap loader, a small program that initializes the system hardware and loads the operating system from storage. When you turn on your computer, the BIOS, meaning the basic input output system or UEFI, meaning unified extensible firmware interface stored in RAM, runs a power on self-test or post-test to check your, the hardware. Then the bootstrap loader kicks in, finds the operating system on your device and loads it into RAM, allowing your computer to start functioning. Finally, at the bottom of the hierarchy, we have secondary storage such as hard disk drives or solid state drives. These are the slowest and cheapest form of memory, but they offer the highest capacity. Hard disk use spinning platters and read write heads to store data magnetically. SSDs, on the other hand, use flash memory, making them much faster and more durable than hard disk drives. Secondary storage is used to store the operating system, application and all your files. Let's see the memory hierarchy in action. When you open a document, the CPU first checks if the document's data is in cache. If it's not, the CPU retrieves it from RAM. If the document is not in RAM because it was recently closed, the CPU retrieves it from the hard drive and loads it into RAM, then copies the relevant portion into cache for faster access. By organizing memory in this hierarchical way, computers can achieve a balance between speed, cost, and capacity, ensuring efficient performance. And that's the memory hierarchy in the nutshell. Understanding this concept is crucial for comprehending how computer manages data and optimizes performance. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to Learning Up for more exciting tech explanations.
Until next time, keep exploring.